everybody, Fran here at New Testament Explained. This video is going to explore challenges to the resurrection narratives that have emerged since the Enlightenment. In particular, this video will focus on challenges to the resurrection as a miracle, the resurrection as a fictional event, the resurrection as a myth, and finally, the resurrection as an event in the experience of the disciples. The first area that we're going to look at are challenges to the resurrection as a miracle. David Hume has argued that it will always be impossible to prove whether a miracle happened, but miracles are the most improbable thing that can happen. When looking at the resurrection of Jesus, then, it is most improbable that he resurrected. It's not likely that Jesus resurrected from the dead. In terms of the strengths of this theory, um, there is a chance that the disciples wanted to believe that Jesus rose so much that they saw things that were not reality. A second strength is that over time, belief in the supernatural has decreased as our knowledge and understanding grows. And therefore, it is likely that the disciples lived in a pre-scientific world where you look to the supernatural for explanations whereas we might start looking to more naturalistic explanations of the resurrection. And finally, there are not sufficient testimonies by objective people to prove that the resurrection was a miracle and did happen. Counter arguments include the fact that the disciples were aware that dead people don't come back to life. There's a lot of disbelief and doubt in the resurrection narratives, which undermines the first strength. Equally, Richard Swinburne's principle of credulity states that we should accept what people tell us unless we have good evidence that they are mistaken. And finally, Hume's argument can be considered circular. He says that dead people never come back to life and therefore never accept a report that someone has come back to life from the dead. So it kind of just goes round in a circle. The next area we're going to look at is the resurrection as a fictional event. And two theories come under this heading. The theft hypothesis states that Jesus' disciples stole the body to make believe that the resurrection had taken place. So Jesus hadn't resurrected, the disciples stole the dead body to make it look like he had resurrected. A second theory that comes under this heading is the swoon hypothesis. And this states that Jesus didn't actually die on the cross. He passed out, which is where the swoon comes from. In the tomb, he recovered. And this theory is popular with some Muslims because the Quran states that Jesus did not die on the cross. In terms of strengths and weaknesses of the theft hypothesis, the theft hypothesis has existed as a theory for a long time, as early as Matthew 28 verses 11 to 15. And Celsus also brings up the theft hypothesis before the Enlightenment. The counter argument, which I would, I would say is quite compelling, is that Oregon objects. He argues that the disciples would not have stolen the body and then died themselves, faced persecution themselves for a lie. The theft hypothesis only makes sense up until a certain point, and that point is where early Christians are being persecuted and killed. It's at that point that if the disciples had stolen the body, you would expect them to say something rather than die. In terms of the Swoon hypothesis, um, there are quite a few counter arguments, I would say, as opposed to arguments. The biggest argument in favour of this theory is that Jesus died after six hours. That's quite a short amount of time. In Mark 15, 14, we see that Pilate is surprised by the fact that Jesus has died. Um, the counter argument is that you need to remember what Jesus went through up until the point he was crucified. He'd been flogged by the Romans. We know he was weak because he didn't carry his own cross. Simon of Cyrene did. And you've got to remember that he's been executed by the Romans. They know what they are doing. They will know whether he has died or not. There are some conspiracies. The deeper and deeper you look into Swoon hypothesis. Karl Barth argues that the disciples gave Jesus a drug 
that brought about a near death state so it would look like he died for example this conspiracy has been criticized um some people even within the swoon hypothesis sort of school of thought would say that it is more like that jesus went into a coma and a work naturally because of the cold air in the tomb so even within this field of um, theologians who think Jesus didn't die on the cross, there are disagreements. The next theory we're going to look at is the resurrection as a myth. This theory states that Jesus' death and resurrection has become mixed up and intertwined with pagan and Jewish myths. The theory goes as follows. The disciples originally believed that Jesus' resurrection was spiritual. That means his literal body did not resurrect, only his spirit did. The theory then says that over time, myths took a hold. And what we end up with is crucifixion and resurrection narratives that suggest the resurrection was a physical, was a bodily one. Now, in terms of the strengths of this argument, there are certainly similarities between the Egyptian god Osiris and the suffering servant in Isaiah. Equally, this theory does seem to align with stories that we've looked at before, such as the road to Emmaus, where the disciples don't recognise the resurrected Jesus. That would certainly align with the notion that the disciples originally believed in a spiritual resurrection. On the counter argument side, ancient Jews did not have myths about dying and rising gods. So it's unlikely that a Jewish myth would have had an impact on the death and resurrection narrative. Furthermore, Jesus doesn't always fit the template for the suffering servant. And at this point, if you've not seen my video on the suffering servant in Isaiah, I would watch that video. It comes under the playlist topic 1.1 prophecies regarding the Messiah. Another weakness is that there is only about a 30 year gap between the crucifixion event and the first Christians writing down their accounts in which we've got this switch to a physical resurrection. Now, many would argue that 30 years is not long enough for the myths to have really taken hold and to have really changed people's understanding of the resurrection. The final area that we're going to look at is the resurrection as an event in the experience of the disciples. This is commonly known as the hallucination hypothesis, which states that the disciples were unable to believe that Jesus had died and were therefore deluded into thinking he had risen. They hallucinated. Another theory in this topic is the objective vision hypothesis, and this states that the hallucinations were genuine religious experiences they were God-given visions. In terms of strengths and weaknesses of the hallucination hypothesis, Celsus suggested back in the second century that this had happened, and developments in psychology support the idea that healthy people under great emotional stress can hallucinate whilst looking normal in other respects. A counter-argument to that was put forward by Oregon, who argued that the disciples were not mentally unbalanced nor delirious. Another strength was put forward by Jack Kent, who said that the later disciples, namely Peter and Paul, experienced normal grief-related hallucinations. However, this has been undermined by Gary Habermas, who points out the, the conversion disorder that Jack Kent refers to was more likely to occur in women, adolescents and people with low socioeconomic status. And Peter and Paul don't really apply to that criteria. In terms of the objective vision hypothesis, it explains why different people had the same hallucinations. You would expect different people to have different hallucinations. However, if the hallucinations are genuine religious experience, God given, then that would explain why the hallucinations are the same across different people. William Craig, however, has dismissed this theory, stating that God would have no reason to not just resurrect Jesus. Um, it was essentially a bit strange that God would choose to give disciples and so on hallucinations when he could have just resurrected Jesus. That then 
marks the end of this video. As always, thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already.